are the Yawi family. My name is Johnny. This is my beautiful wife, Sarah. And uh, Yawi, as you just heard, is, uh, stands for You Are Worth It. And um, we're going we're gonna to be talking a little bit about that tonight. Um, I'll let Sarah kick things off, though, <laughs> at least to try to train you in a direction that we want you to go. All right, we're going to do a little storytelling first. Um, imagine a 17-year-old boy, has a good family, um, has a job after school, has a girlfriend, has lots of friends. Um, and he has this after school job and it feels like it's taking away from friend time, from life. And so he takes the time during school to have that as friend time. And so he's sleeping school with his friends, with his girlfriend, um, not caring about work. And, um, his girlfriend isn't really the kind of person who knows how to connect well, to know how, knows how to have a great relationship. And they get in a fight one day, and he takes it out on the inside of the high school. And so after that, he's kicked out of school. OK, so I just turned it off. I shut everything off. There it is. Um, let's now talk about a 17-year-old girl at this very same time, um, has this goal to become a cosmetologist. So she enrolls herself with some help um, with, of her parents and, and her good grades into cosmetology school and, um, and um, planning on for her senior year to um, go ahead and go through that schooling so that when she graduates high school, she can graduate at the same time uh, from cosmetology school and move on to have a career and, um, and, and make women beautiful. And uh, at the end of her, uh, her junior year, she finds out that she is pregnant. And um, this is in Utah, which is uh, it's a very difficult thing for a teenager, uh, first of all, to, to, to find out that you're pregnant um, and to be busted for doing things you shouldn't be doing. Um, and to, to, first of all, have people around you that are um, uh, they, they thought high, more, more highly of you, or um, there's a lot of shame type situations going on. Not, not on purpose, but it happens. And um, so this girl is, 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 finds out she's pregnant, and she's trying to figure out what she's going to do. Because there are so many people around here asking her and telling her and trying to make decisions for her, because she's young, uh, they're trying to help, um, she decides to fold and completely cut communication off with the people around her and give in to the, the things that some of these people um, you know, around her are trying to help her out and doing. Of course, they know what they're talking about, so we can follow that trail. She, um, she, she finds herself in, um, in a position where she has the option to give um, her, her baby up for adoption. And she looks into this as something that she should be taking serious, because it is an option, as um, the family saying and, and trying to help her understand that this is not something you can do on your own. And getting married to the father of this baby is probably not a good idea, um, as um, you, you two are just too young and, and you just can't do it. You, you, can't, you can't raise this baby. There are people out there that, uh, ha that, that are working on a regular basis to try to, um, to ad adopt and they can't have babies. So let's, let's talk about that. Um, and so she is, is, is presented with this decision and um, Trying to figure out if I'm missing anything here about the story about this this young woman. Um, so she decides uh, that at the end of all this, that she wants to make the decision and get her boyfriend involved to keep this baby. So they make a decision together that they're going to keep this baby uh, against all of what their family wanted them to, to do. Um, and, and, and then see where this life is then going to take them. If you haven't figured it out already, the, the, uh, the, the young couple, the, the, the young woman and the young man, that was us at 17 years old. Um, we had Branson right there. He was, um, he was born when we, were, um, when we were 17 years old. And so that was very difficult, and we were still being, um, being pushed to not get married and do the things that we would 
we would hope for ourselves and our, for our family because we are too young. We, we, um, yeah, once again, you have someone over here that uh, has just um, got kicked out of high school and, and didn't graduate, and you have one, some, someone over here who just had a baby at 17, doesn't know how to raise a baby. Um, so that's us. That's, uh, so we decided from that point that uh, we were going to, to keep Branson, and, um, and, and that was the decision that we had the opportunity to make and we made. And so in the eyes of the world, right at the starting point of our lives, um, we kind of were ending it um, as the way the world sees it. And the baby's born, Branson's born, and I decide that for my sanity, I need some time away. I take the baby, run away, and no one knows where I'm at. And um, just have time to decide what I want in this life, who I want to be with, what direction I want to go. Um, a couple months later, three months later, Johnny and I reconnect, we start talking again. Um, he comes to visit me and we decide to run away and elope. We, <laughs> and again, no one knows where we're at. So it's, I guess it was a trend at that time. To <laughs> I'm gonna add to that really quickly. Nobody knew this had happened. Uh, my family, her family, no one knew about it. In fact, no one knew about us actually eloping and getting married till about a month after uh, we did it. And so we won't get into that, that story now. <laughs> That's a really long story. Um, <laughs> so now we're at this point where um, our families have found out, they, they've brought us together, um, and we have to start being a family. We have to start making choices of which direction we're going to go, how we're going to stay alive, all of these things. I finished beauty school and started working to help supplement our income. Johnny's doing jobs, any job he can find to make sure that he is taking care of our family. Okay. Um, so let me just really say, say here really quickly, one of the, the things that, that I really wanted to impress upon you is, as I was growing up, um, now that you know who that teenager was, I didn't have any goals. Like, I, I, I worked with my hands a lot, and I, I was in a family where my dad worked. He just knew how to work. It was just, whatever it was, you just work, you just work, you just work. And so my plan was, is just to just get through life, and as soon as I got out of high school, however that, whether I graduated or not, it was get these things to work, and that's what you do for the rest of your life. And so, um, I look back and I think about some of the, the main goals I had. I didn't have any. I only had one. And that was, I really wanted a family. And so through all that we just went through to get to this point where we have a family, I got to put these things to work now to provide for that family and prove the point to everybody else that said it couldn't happen that we needed to make this happen. And so to keep the, the, uh, the wedge from coming between us, which it does in, in, in newly weds, um, we were kind of trying to keep people off of us from saying we couldn't do it, right? So we had a goal, we had this goal, we had to, we had to make it. And so I, um, I took some jobs, I, I welded uh, gun safes, which was incredible, I love that job. I, I was a laborer at a rock crushing pit, I, was, I did a lot of different things. And so, you know, you get through life and you start um, thinking about what you really wanna do, especially when you're providing for a family. And we decided that we were going to have our second child. And um, that was a decision that we, did, we, we made that um, we wanted to continue to add to our family. Uh, finances hadn't changed. And um, Sarah was working, and she, she had an income, a small income coming in, and I was working, and so we were, we were getting by. We decided to have our second child, and Alexia Rose, the beautiful up there, she's now 16, um, she was born. And um, we went through a few months of, maybe even a year, of, of both of us working, and we found that that just wasn't working for our children. And so we made a sacrifice, um, and that was Sarah t to stop doing the cosmetology thing and to come home and raise our children. Well, my financial situation hadn't changed, and so um, we had to take a, a massive pay cut, at least in terms of the percentage that we had two, two people working. Um, we made that decision based upon the, um, the goal of family, once again, that we, that, that, that we both had in our hearts. And um, so we did so, and I thought, you know what, I need to go to school. That's the only way I'm gonna get these things to stop working so much and get this thing to be working more. And at least statistically speaking, 
back then we were we would look into it you can make a lot more money and so um, so I did. I enrolled into UVU, and um, I went there for a couple semesters, semesters and I found that um, this little Alexia Rose, who was just rolling over and doing her thing, goo goo ga, ga all of a sudden started walking and doing these things that I was missing. I was missing out. What's more important at that point to myself, an, an education that's going to get me this corporate job, or to see this young girl that's going to be out of my house soon, grow and to, and to experience those, those pieces and parts that I desire myself. And so I made another sacrifice. I figured out that if I, and we worked on this together, if I were to stop school, I would then have to find a, and get my foot in a door to a company that I could take, and this is the way I put it, I could take the jobs down there, uh, 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 you know, climb the corporate ladder. And so I did. I, I found a, immediately, uh, it was, my prayers were answered, I immediately found a job where I, I was found myself at the bottom and the opportunities were, um, were good. And so each position ahead of me, I, I, I started knocking them down one at a time. And three years after I started uh, with that company, I was the branch manager. In fact, one of the youngest branch managers in the company at that time. And they had 70, uh, sorry, probably 60, 60 branches across the United States. And um, I was then hiring people underneath of me who had degrees that I didn't have. And so I was kind of like, this is, this worked out. This worked out great. And then we had... Uh, Danielle during that time, which is the one on the end there, and then we had one, and then another one, and then another one, and um, and and each one was a decision that we made together that we would continue to raise our family, and uh, my job helped facilitate that, and I loved it. I loved what I was doing, and we loved what it was what it was providing for our family. And then uh, Sarah got pregnant with our seventh child, the um, the the one up top uh, above my head there. Um, so as soon, right after having our seventh baby, I found a lump in my abdomen and we went to the doctor, had all the tests done and found out that I had cancer. And so, um, if you can imagine, I have a tiny baby sitting there, um, thinking what is going to happen to me? What's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen to my kids? Um, what if I die from this? What if I can't? watch my kids grow up and, or grow old with Johnny, what, what's going to happen? And it was really a whirlwind. The baby was five weeks old. I had surgery. This is where I interrupt. Oh, sorry. I'm going to interrupt really quick. I want to, <laughs> I want to put this out there. And by the way, this is how we always work. Sarah starts talking about something <laughs> exciting. and I'm like, no, no, listen to this. Um, but I'm going to do it right now. I'm, I'm going to be selfish here with, with, with this little piece of uh, interjection here. So, I, during, you know, during this time of looking at my family, looking at this picture, looking at my wife, looking at our position, looking at all the incredible things around us, remember that time that I said um, that I had this desire to just see this daughter of mine, Allie, uh, Alexia, I wanted to see those parts and pieces of her life that, um, that, that unfortunately a lot of men miss, right? Um, or working, I guess, parents that are working. And so... I had this deep desire. In fact, it was so deep, it was one of those where I literally found myself on my knees on a regular basis, figure, trying to figure out with the man upstairs how I was going to make this happen. I wanted the very best experience with that little guy up there that I could ever have as a father. I, that, I, I had this desire to have the very best experience. And it was, uh, once again, it was so strong, I didn't care how I, I got it. Like, nothing else mattered. I wanted the very best experience with that guy because I felt like as I worked that job, the hours were a little bit longer because once again, it was, uh, it, you know, as, as I was climbing up that corporate ladder, more and more hours are stacked on. I did miss a few more things that, um, uh, but it was exciting to, to get into new jobs and everything. Anyway, uh, that's exactly this same time is when I had this, this massive desire to spend more time with that little guy in a different way. So I have the surgery, um, I have the tumor removed, you know, when you cut in your abdominal muscles, it's really hard to do anything after that for a while. Um, Johnny was taking care of me, he was taking care of the baby, he was taking care of all the other kids, he was mom and dad at this point. And luckily for me, I am way more, I guess, I guess I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I guess I could say lucky, but I had it way better with my cancer than so many other people. I went from 
oh my goodness, there's a lump, to five weeks later saying we removed it all, it was cancer, but we don't think there's any problems and we'll just watch it and make sure it doesn't come back. And, but on the side, the doctor's also saying, I'll take it to the tumor board just to be sure. And so we're like, oh, free and clear. No cancer, no chemo, no radiation, none of this. We can just go back to our regular lives. A couple months later, the doctor comes back and says, well, we wanna do some chemotherapy. Or no, sorry, radiation, not chemotherapy. Um, so still, I had it way easier than so many other people. I did a little radiation, I got back. I was sick a little bit, but nothing big. And at that time, Johnny and I were talking about, he had this feeling that it was time for him to quit his job, to quit um, the work that he, the company that he's been with for 13 years. It's our st stability, it's our insurance. Um, and start a new company that he'd been working on with some friends. Okay, so once again, um, she had to sacrifice something for me at that point so that I could have what I wanted. Um, I, I never thought that I'd be sitting up in, at, at a, a very dimly lit room with a, you know, a, a five month old baby or a five week, six week old baby, just grinning from ear to ear, changing the dirtiest, nastiest diaper uh, that he had laid out. Um, <laughs> That was the experience that I had a desire for, and it was incredible. Um, going back to, you know, I was not only taking care of this baby and bringing him over to eat and then taking care of him, I was also taking care of her, and it gave me an opportunity to really just be thankful for what we had just gone through. Um, and, and it gave me a new life. It gave me new, it, it, it was a, a, a breath of, of this, this uh, vision of a, a, a different life. And so immediately I started thinking crazy. Uh, I was talking with people, I was talking with her, and I'm sure she was just like, this guy is nuts. Like, and of course, as we're talking about this and me leaving, I had the strong need now to leave this company I've been working for, and they treated us so well. Uh, they were family. After 13 years, it was time to leave. And, um, and can, can you cue up that picture now? This is uh, the meeting. Uh, my first meeting, in fact, my only meeting that I set up for that day, on Thursday, June 25th, 2015. Um, and it, apparently it was only supposed to go for an hour long, but um, it's time to jump. This was, um, this, this was on my calendar to go and, and, and take this major leap of faith to go in a direction that we didn't know where it was going to take us. Um, I mean, think about it. Insurance, um, really good, stable job. I had job security. I, this company loved me. I loved them. We went on trips at least once a year with the company that they paid for. Um, just I could stay there forever. There were people that stayed there at that company until they were retired and they loved it. I did this to them on June 25th. I called up my boss and said, hey, I'm out. I have a resignation letter. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, send it to you here quickly. I didn't know how to do this. I, I didn't know how it was done. The other job I was like, I'm out of here. I'm like, get out of here. Leave. Go to the next whatever. Um, this one was different. I had, this was my family. And so you can see that that's exactly how I felt at the top there. But a very confident uh, grippy of teeth or whatever that thing is. Um, yeah, this. Uh, they asked, I gave them my 30 days. That's what you do, right? You give them 30 days notice. They asked for 90 days. I'm like, this messes up everything. We had plans. Like we were literally, gonna, I was going to quit this. And then in between, um, I was going to, I was going to kick off this other company. But in between, we were going to go you're going to go stay at a farm for like a month and just completely cut off the whole entire world. Like, like I said, I was crazy. I just wanted time with that beautiful family. So I, we made the jump. We made the jump. Uh, I remember calling Sarah after and going, I did it. It's, it's done. Now they're asking for 90 days and we got to figure that out. I gave him 60, a very healthy 60. I, I, I pushed to the finish line. But um, the company, by the way, you're probably wondering, the company that I left to go start, we'd already kind of been working on it. It's still going today, but it hasn't necessarily really launched into a new space. Um, as soon as I left, which was actually September 1st, 2015, the day that I left this company um, and we had a party and all those different things, I got a phone call uh, from a partner and he said, hey, I, we got a meeting set up first thing in the morning. There's a guy that wants to be part of this company. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. So immediately this very next day, um, I'm going to back up a little bit. I'm going to back up a little bit. <laughs> uh, 
a few weeks before this, I, with all this craziness that I was going through, I hadn't also not, I had not documented, if you can put our picture back up there, I had do not documented this picture or this, this family enough. We had had pictures and we'd had all these different things and I hated my picture taken. I hated seeing myself. I hated hearing my voice, all those different things. But I had this desire to also document our life. And I don't even know where it came from, but we need to document more. We got to have something in the bank for later on to see what, what this was all about. You just survived cancer. We just had our seventh baby. Life is just gonna zoom. We gotta, we gotta document this. A friend of mine said, put it on YouTube. Your family can subscribe and they can kind of see what you're up to. I'm like, oh, that's, that's perfect. So what do I do? I just edit it? Like, what is editing? How, did, how does all that work? So, I, we, so we, we made, um, we, we made our, our I, I should stop there, huh? A friend of mine <laughs> told me to put it on YouTube. Back to the story of the, of the company. So uh, we took on a financial partner that morning and decided that our website was not scalable and we shut it all down and started from scratch again, which gave me six months of doing next to nothing except for just going in every once in a while and going, okay, this is on track. Okay, it's on track with the developers. Six months with my family. Now, I couldn't go back to this company that asked for 90 days. I gave them 60. Uh, we just left. We had this party. I couldn't go back. I just didn't, it didn't feel right. So I now had six months with this beautiful family to do whatever it was that we desired. And so my desire was to spend as much time with them as possible, and so we did. So we made our first video, uh, and uh, that first video was uh, the, the kid's first day of school in 2015, and Sarah's last day of radiation, of cancer radiation. In fact, since that point, that actually was the last day. Um, and, and we put it out there. It was like a, to the YouTubers in this room, it was like 40-something minutes long or something. It was like maybe longer. It was incredible. We didn't know what we were doing. I was putting a video out there. I didn't know that other people were going to watch it. No music, no... Just it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. It was like, there was, it was terrible. Um, either way. It, and it, yet we watch it every year. We just regurgitated <laughs> it again. So, um, so that was fun. We put a video out there. It got some views from our family members. Our family, our, our family members were like, oh, that was really cool to see that. And, you know, someone from Idaho or Arizona. And so we're like, okay, let's make another one. Uh, I'm out exploring with my kids. Oh, look, I don't have a job now. Look how cool I am. I'm gonna, let's just get up early and let's go take the kids and let's go catch frogs and, and do all these crazy things that I wanted to do. And we did. And we documented it. And we put it up on, the, on, on YouTube. And about two or three months into it, all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm in there and I'm, I'm looking at YouTube. I'm trying to figure out this, that, and the other. Oh, you, you got to maybe put an intro or something on there, or you have to do something a little bit different. We got a bunch of comments on there saying, hey, will you guys do this challenge, or will you, will you do this, or do you know these guys? Do you know the Shaytards? No, I don't know who the Shaytards are. What? Okay, let's go look up the Shaytards. Oh, this guy's putting out videos of his day just like we are, and he's doing it for a living. Oh, what's going on here? So, of course, let's, let's grow a beard and, and put on a camouflage jacket and let's be just like Shea Carl. No, that's not what I wanted to do, but I did grow a beard because I'd never done that before. A phenomenal beard. Um, and, and, so, and so that's where we were at. We were spending time together with our family and we were documenting and putting it out there. We got subscribers. It started happening. We started doing these different things. And um, we started realizing that this could be something. And by January 1, we'd hit a million views on our channel. And we found, about th found out about this thing called CVX Live, and we're like, hey, let's, let's get in the next big YouTuber contest. So we did. And so we started finding by watching other people's content, even some of the ones that are here, that, um, that, that you can do this for a job. Um, we were at 3 million views, and I decided to watch a video about how to monetize your channel, and apparently it was just a button. Three million views. I missed out on some cash. So we turned on that button, and, and because before that point, I'm like, Sarah, I don't know how we're going to do this. Like, money's running out quick. Our savings is, is going away, and this other company is just taking forever. What are we going to do? And so we toggled that thing on and went, oh, the next day, look at that. This is exciting. It's like 46 cents or something in there. I don't remember what it was, but it was, okay, so if we... T Times that by 10, Sarah. Just take the calculator. Look, that's $4.60. And then we do that again. That's, oh, 46. Let's just keep, we can do this, right? So we did. We continued to make videos and we continued to get to know people in the space that did um, this same thing. And we grew. And by month seven, 
seven or eight months into it, we were full-time YouTubers. It had taken up this amount of money that was continuing to uh, take, be taken out of our bank account, and we started making enough to cover our bills over here. How incredible was that? And so we're now YouTubers. Did you want to interject at all? I got to give her an opportunity. I feel like I'm... I know, right? No, I'm... Okay. We putting you guys to sleep? We're YouTubers now. <laughs> you want me to keep going? Yeah, go for Okay, so now we're YouTubers, and now I'm okay with seeing my smile or laugh or my face on, on screen, and now we're getting serious. Now I put the, the, the business hat on. Okay, you need to stop doing this and this and this and this, and you need to do this, and uh, Beach House, you need to make a video with a tail, and uh, a mermaid tail, and you know, we, I'm just putting on the business, right? Um, that actually wore us out pretty quickly. It, it wore our family out pretty quickly. So this, all these smiles that are on these kids' faces, um, they looked a lot like Savannah's there for a little bit, like, what are you doing, Dad? And then they turned into, this is not fun anymore. Um, and so internally, externally, we were growing. Um, people were loving us. They were loving what we were doing. Um, but internally, we, it, it just wasn't working out. And so one day during a live, we decided to, we need to send out a message to our followers. We need to be somewhat, something more than just, hey, look at us. We're YouTubers. You, are, you, know, you know we're cool. Put a comment below if you think we're cool. We didn't want that. We don't want that. We want more. We want more of a purpose. We want them to leave our videos with something. And maybe not everyone, but, but the ones that need it. And so we threw out this, that, and the other, a few things here and there. What we came up with that actually had some pretty good um, uh, reaction was, you are worth it. And so we decided that because of that reaction, we would say it after every video and maybe throw a little piece in there to help understand the message a little bit more. Well, we also realized before that um, that we, we were saying at the end of our videos, we love you guys, and we would have people comment and say, you're our family, you tell us you love us, and we don't have anybody at home that tells us that they love us. And, and so we love watching you guys, and to get, to get that love and, and just a look at family life. And so we're like, okay, we need to take this, and we need to run with it. We need to be the best examples that we can be. And so that's where the You Are Worth It message came into play. So we used it for quite some time. We ran with it as hard as we possibly could go. And then we started falling apart again because YouTube has this thing called an algorithm that if you are not its friend, it's not your friend at all. And so we found ourselves in a position of going, okay, now things are not looking so good. Something's happened here. We, uh, we went through something called a demonetization. Our channel was completely demonetized because of those early videos we put, on, put out there. One of them being, oh, let's go get flu shots. Oh, let's just document it. That's cool. Well, kids crying in videos? No, not going to happen. That was one of our largest videos. So we got rid of all those videos. We kind of started changing the way that we were doing things, making sure that our kids were not being put out there in, in, in any crying form. And so we kind of changed the way that we were doing things. Um, but internally, we started kind of falling apart again. This message of you are worth it being sent out to our followers, we weren't even practicing on each other. We were working for the work, but not for what the, the message was all about. And so it was time to make another sacrifice. Kill the Tannerites channel. We hit 600,000 subscribers. We shut it off. We said, we're, we're not doing that anymore. We will not cater to the content that this wants us to cater to. We're done. We're over here on the Yowie channel. We are now the Yowie family. Y-A-W-I. You are worth it, family. That's who we are from here on out because we want to focus 100% on our message. And we eventually want to get to a point where we are... Um, we are living it, right? We're not just speaking it, we are living it. And so we made that change, and that was in March of this year. And um, so what has happened now to where we're at is we now have two channels. We went back to the Tannerites channel because our kids still wanted to do the fun little goofy game stuff. So we do that, and we're growing that channel continually. Um, but the Yowie channel is also growing, and it's growing because of the constant message and reminder that we send out of worth to our followers. Now, I want to make sure we have enough time. Do we? Have, Give me two, three, we, seven. Are what are we? Over? Are we? Are we taking up too much time? I need two more minutes. Okay, two more minutes. Do you want to add anything else? Because you can ask her for two minutes too. You know. <laughs> and Garrett's over there going, "Yes, two more minutes, seven more minutes, twelve more minutes." Um, 
I'm just going to finish it up here, if that's okay. 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 So we switch over to the Yowie family. We've now found a new purpose within our family and within our life. And we're seeing these beautiful eyes look up a little bit more. Um, we're seeing these kids become themselves through this message. We're, we're finding out that, um, that what we had in the very beginning in terms of our desire, this 17-year-old boy and this 17-year-old girl who was being told that they couldn't raise a family, we were being told we couldn't raise a family. This 17-year-old boy and the 17-year-old girl that both had a strong desire in their heart just to have a family. Maybe not a massive career, maybe not all the money in the world, but a family. Now, this is the takeaway that we would like you to leave with. Um, of course, you are worth it. Um, and maybe you can get out that message so I can say it the right way. But... This is it right here. This is the one that we've been using on a hashtag on our stuff for a while, and it's a message that we're trying to build, and that is this. Whatever it is that you have a desire for, you came here tonight to be inspired or to maybe meet someone you've been following for a while. Whatever the case is, you are here. You all, every single one of you, have something in you, and maybe it was triggered again tonight, something in you that you want to be or do. And it might be tomorrow, it might be 10 years down the road, it might be 50 years. Whatever that is, Whatever it is you want to be, you already are. That 17-year-old boy and that 17-year-old girl, because of the desires in their hearts, because of what they wanted to be, they already were a beautiful family. Of course, it took one baby at a time to get there. Of course, it took a lot of work, a lot of effort. But they already were a family. They already were. So whatever it is that you want to be, you, this is the takeaway. You already are don't think you're not. So I wrote this down to make sure it sounded right. Bear with me. We're just vloggers. We're just YouTubers. Whatever it is that you want to be, you already are. Whatever doubts about yourself that you might have about becoming that, remember that you are worth it. Thank you, guys.